In 20 years, we'll look back nostalgically on the Vision Pro from our hyper Apple Vision X or whatever and talk about how, in spite of its flaws, more than any other device, it kickstarted the spatial computer revolution we'll probably be taking for granted by 2044. I know that sounds hyperbolic, and maybe time will prove me wrong, but Apple went ahead and appled again, making a device that's both incredible to use and transformative in what it sets out to achieve. Is it without flaw? Absolutely not. There are a lot of things about the Vision Pro I don't like, but the stuff I do like, like isn't strong enough of a word. It's more of a mixture of love and downright astonishment at what it brings to computing. Apple bills the Vision Pro as the world's first spatial computing device, a concept where the real world and the digital world act together in an intuitive and mostly seamless way. Technically, this isn't augmented reality because the real world you're seeing when you don the Vision Pro is actually being beamed into your eyeballs via a pair of close, but not quite, 4K screens that adjust automatically to your eyes placement on your face. There are a total of 12 cameras in the headset, most of which are tracking the outside world and then firing those images directly into your eyeballs via those beautiful screens. The effect is a very close approximation of the world around you with a bit of digital noise. I found myself having difficulty reading words on the screen of my iPhone and even on my PC, but otherwise it didn't take long for me to adjust to the world in a slightly lower resolution than that of reality. The Vision Pro relies almost entirely on gestures to navigate its user interface. When you put it on for the first time, you run through a setup process that adjusts the headset to your specific face and hands, as well as your eyes, and sets up your persona. To set up your persona, you'll remove Apple Vision Pro to capture your appearance. Their persona is the avatar people see when they FaceTime or otherwise video conference with you when you're in the Vision Pro. Mine is horrifying, and I may have intentionally gone with the worst looking first attempt for the sake of comedy. After it's all set up, you interact with the interface with a little pinching gesture. That quick pinch renders the equivalent of a keystroke or a mouse click. Holding the pinch and then moving your hand in an open window registers a scroll. A lot of how the gestures work depends on what application you're using and where you're looking to. Instead of pointing with your fingers where you want to click, you just point your eyes. Want to open Apple TV? Easy enough. Just look at the icon. Give it a pinch. Want to close it out? Okay. Look at the dot on the bottom until it expands it to an X. Pinch. Resizing and moving the windows also requires a quick look and a pinch. With the exception of when I was trying it at my very busy, poorly lit desk, which thankfully none of you can see, I never had a single problem with the Vision Pro registering a gesture. Looking up causes a small arrow to appear that brings up the main menu, so you can easily jump from app to app and access the control center. There were very few instances where I encountered troubles with the UI, but they did happen. While moving windows, resizing, opening and closing apps and menu widgets is straightforward and easy, I'm not a fan of the typing interface. You have two options when composing a message. You could either tap away at the virtual keyboard in front of your face, or you just look at a letter and pinch it. I don't really like either option, to be honest. Both methods are somewhat error prone unless you slow yourself down quite a bit. Uh, this I'm so used to hammering out messages quickly on my keyboard or on the iPhone's touch interface that it's very frustrating to have to slow my roll and methodically go from letter to letter with my eyes or stumble over a letter and mistype it. I'm sure it's something I'll get used to and therefore be better at, but I feel like there has to be a better way. And there is, but I'll get to that later. As giddy as I find myself when experiencing the apps and the immersive movies the Vision Pro offers, I kind of dislike wearing it. All of its 1.4 pound weight is in the front. And for me, the entirety of that weight feels like it's concentrated on a single point on the bridge of my nose, right here, right here. I think it's a little red even. I found myself constantly pushing the headset up to relieve the pressure, but then the Vision Pro would ask me to politely pull it back down again for the purposes of accurate eye tracking. I endured the discomfort because I really like using the Vision Pro. 
I appreciate the mindfulness app. Hi, this is Jessica, and I'll be guiding you through this meditation on calm. But it's kind of hard to relax to a guided meditation when your nose is distracted by a state of constant low-grade pain. Although perhaps that's part of the meditative process. The cause of suffering, after all, is desire. Inhale calm. Exhale stability. Other than the front heavy discomfort, I didn't find any other problems with the way it fits on my face. Adjusting the strap is really easy with a dedicated knob on the right side that's oddly satisfying to turn. The strap is an elastic webbing that never felt like it was pushing on the back of my head. The visor liner itself doesn't put pressure on any other part of my face and does a very good job of blocking out the real world, although there is a little bit of light bleeding in under my nose. Power to the Vision Pro is fed into the unit via a connector on the left side of the strap that clicks, then locks into place. It's definitely the most inelegant part of the Vision Pro, to be honest. At one point, I accidentally dropped the battery pack while it was connected, and it jarringly just pulled the headset down the left side of my face. A MagSafe connector would be so much better, but since there's no onboard battery, disconnecting the battery pack shuts the headset down instantly. I don't know what the real solution is other than maybe a small capacity battery in the headset itself, but for now, weight issues are already a problem and it kind of seems like this was Apple's best compromise. I don't know. Apple wants you to know the Vision Pro is not a virtual reality headset, but it is. But it's actually a spatial computing, paradigm shifting, dynamic leap forward in how we interact with technology, which Okay, sure. With its incredible resolution and frankly fantastic motion tracking, the Vision Pro would be the king of the virtual reality headsets were there virtual reality games for it, but there aren't, at least not for now. There are a few Apple Arcade games built for use with the Vision Pro, but they're augmented reality experiences rather than fully immersive VR games. They're also not really any different from what's already out there. In fact, I'm pretty sure a lot of these games are already on other platforms, but whatever. Other than the excellent resolution, the games on Vision Pro would be right at home on pretty much any other AR or VR headset. Now, if you have a game console and you're wondering if you can use Vision Pro to play, the answer is kind of. There's no way to hook a console directly to the headset, so you can forget about playing your Nintendo Switch. However, since PS5 and Xbox both have remote play options, you can play them on gigantic virtual screens. After trying it out, I can't recommend it though. Firstly, there are no native Xbox or PlayStation apps for the Vision Pro. The iPad version of the Xbox app is compatible with the device and can be downloaded from the App Store. The PlayStation app is nowhere to be found in the Vision Pro App Store interface, but there is an app called Mirror Play that works to stream PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 remotely. I tried out both consoles, and my advice is just don't, don't bother. The Xbox app caps resolution at 720p, which is a fine experience if you're playing on a phone. But if you have dreams of streaming Starfield to a virtual screen encompassing an entire wall in your living space, that 720p resolution looks awful. It just does not look good. Mirror Play lets you go up to 1080p, which looks a little better on a stretched out wall-sized screen, but it's still not great. Worse, the streaming experience was choppy and laggy, making Prince of Persia The Lost Crown near unplayable. In short, if you're hoping the Vision Pro will take your gaming experience to the next level, you should probably temper those expectations. There are too many confounding factors involved for me to nail it down to any one particular piece in the chain, but my video game streaming adventures on the Vision Pro were not something I'll be revisiting. Now, movies, on the other hand. When you watch a movie with a Vision Pro in the native Apple TV app, it plays on a giant movie-sized screen where you have the absolute perfect seat in the house no matter where you are. The spatial audio from the astoundingly clear speakers on the headband adds even more to the experience. The biggest downside to watching a movie like Dune on the Apple Vision Pro is you can't go from start to finish on a single battery charge, which really sucks. However, you can plug in the battery pack and stem the tide of depletion, which is a nice consolation. And I was actually really surprised by how quickly it charges while it's in use, but try not to forget you're tethered to the wall if you get up to go get something to drink. As cool as it is to be fully relaxed while watching a traditional Hollywood blockbuster, hands down, 
and I'm not even joking around, my favorite part of the Vision Pro has to be Apple TV's immersive video experiences. There are only a few right now. One where you're in the studio with Alicia Keys, one where you're on a rhino preserve, an experience with pterosaurs during prehistoric times, and a documentary called Highliner, starring and narrated by professional Highliner Faith Dickey. The immersion is made even more impactful by the 4K resolution of the Vision Pro screens. And in the Rhino Preserve movie, one of the baby rhinos came up so close to me that I I did one of these. I instinctively moved my head out of the way to avoid being knocked into by its horn. In other words, the apocryphal tale of early cinema goers being whipped into a frenzied panic at the sight of a runaway train barreling toward them on a movie screen kind of happened to me. You like spreadsheets? Oh, have I got news for you. You can now float a 10-foot Excel worksheet in front of your face at any time and anywhere and do some sick formulas. I like Excel spreadsheets, but the Apple Vision Pro is not the way to use Excel. It's a pared-down version of the full desktop experience, and it's hard and slow to enter in the numbers and formulas. I was hoping Vision Pro would have turned Excel into some magical experience of 3D numbers and a reality in which dividing by zero could actually happen. But instead, it's essentially the iPad Excel floating wherever you want it to float. There's also a version of Microsoft Word, which I can't imagine using given my lack of enthusiasm for typing out even short text messages with a keyboard interface. However, if you really do want to use it for work, you can use it to project your Mac screen into your space and make it as large or as small as you'd like. It works kind of like magic, actually. Provided you're signed into the same account on your Vision Pro as you are on your Mac, when you look at your computer screen, a dialog box will appear on your Vision Pro asking, if you want to connect. And if you do, boom, your Mac screen is now floating in front of you, accepting the inputs from your touchpad and keyboard. This is probably the best way to use a Vision Pro for getting work done, but it's also maybe the most unnecessary. Yes, it is super cool to have your computer screen looming gigantic in front of you, but you could also just use your MacBook with its built-in or connected screen. That being said, it is a convenient way to work. Since you can place screens anywhere you want, you can have your MacBook screen floating on the left and uh, your messages open on the right and whatever else you feel like adding. You can actually use the trackpad and keyboard on your MacBook as input for the Vision Pro apps. You just look at the app you want to interact with and a small little dot appears as your mouse pointer. Click on a text field in the Vision Pro app window and boom, so much better than the Vision Pro's floating ghost keyboard. Since it requires a MacBook with a recent version of Mac OS though, to get this functionality adds the cost of a laptop to an already pricey piece of hardware. No one needs this device. It's expensive, it's kind of uncomfortable, the battery life is a bummer, and yet, if I had the cash and the chance to buy one right this second, I would not even think twice about it. For its shortcomings, the Apple Vision Pro is an absolutely incredible device that completely completely obliterated my skepticism. It does everything it promises to do at a level of craft that is Apple at its absolute best. It's just goofy looking and it costs way too much. But let's be real here. Apple didn't release this device expecting it to be adopted at the same rates as the iPhone. This is Apple identifying how we'll be interacting with technology in the future and demonstrating how the experience should be. It's laying the foundation for the future of spatial computing whatever that may be. If the user experience only builds from here, I am very much looking forward to what the future holds. For more high-tech headset goodness, check out our review of the Oculus Quest 3, and for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.